Note the disclaimer. <laughs> Gravity Falls. I used to think most of the modern Disney Channel was just tween sitcoms. But when Disney gave us smart writing, pitch-perfect voice acting, and crisp animation, it came together to bring to life Stan, yeah. Mabel, Seuss, and Dipper. Ladies and gentlemen, behold, the Sass Crunch! Every character in this show is just so full of life that it's almost catchy. These characters are just so fun to watch interact with their world that you can't help but get caught up in their excitement. Three, four, five, six. <gasps> Your wife is going to be beautiful. Yes. From episode one, I was laughing more than I have in a long time. Stan's an older con artist running a mystery shack, a uh, hack and takes his grandniece and nephew, Dipper and Mabel, in for the summer. And I've just got to say, Stan is the coolest older character I've seen on TV since the ice can. Ha! Smoke bomb! Aw, oh, seriously? Ah! Compared to the others, Dipper seems to be more the surrogate for the teenage viewer. Uh-oh. But the characters around him are so full of life that you don't even notice. Mabel is definitely among my favorite characters, simply because I end up catching her excitement whenever she's on screen. What's the problem, officers? Did you catch my face going 90 smiles per hour? This show has been a wonderful surprise in animation, and I think it more than deserves a top 10 list. So let's take a look at the top 10 best Gravity Falls episodes. A quick note that there are some spoilers in this video, but it helps to understand the story to understand just how brilliant these episodes are. Number 10. Fight Fighters. Dipper keeps hanging out with his crush Wendy, so he eventually gets challenged to a fight. So he does what any intelligent person would do. He brings to life what I can only assume is Ryu from Street Fighter to fight for him. High five! Oh, your pixels are really sharp. The main problem being he's absolutely insane. Makes my shoulders bounce. Fireball, uppercut, downercut, ball of punch. It's hard not to get caught up laughing at the 80s arcade references in this one. <laughs> the animation in this one particularly is really good. Just watching this Street Fighter guy come to life and interact with the standard cartoon world really looks amazing just on its own. We occasionally get some really good parodies of games, and this is one of those really smart parodies that obviously has a lot of affection for the original material. We even get a Donkey Kong reference thrown in there. <laughs> There's also a really fun side plot as Mabel tries to help Stan conquer his fear of heights. It's worth noting that this probably had 100th the budget of Pixels, yet in 20 minutes this made me laugh and smile more than Pixels did in nearly two hours. It parodies anime, bad translations, and 80s games perfectly. I strongly recommend this one. Super Power Ninja Turbo Dio Ultra Hyper Mega Multi Alpha Beta Extra Uber Prefix Combo! Number 9. The Last Mablecorn. A sort of really twisted My Little Pony episode. This episode gave an epic plot twist as we discover Bill Cipher, the main villain of the series, has possessed Stanford. It has some breathtakingly, genuinely surprising scenes as we discover the true story of Stanford. It also has a really funny main story, as Mabel, Candy, Grenda, and Wendy go on a long and perilous journey. About an hour! To cut a unicorn's hair. We don't generally see much of Mabel's friends, but when we do, their scenes are really memorable. Grenda can say anything, and I'll end up laughing. Yeah! Just spill it, half pint! It also has a really good side plot with the gnomes, in among one of the funniest scenes I've seen in Gravity Falls so far. Where do you get this stuff? Everyone lacks sausage, but no one likes to know how it's made. You disgust me! You've got your poison, I've got mine. I actually really like the moral of this episode. It's all about Mabel discovering that the supposed purest creature in her life turns out to be just as flawed and human as everyone else. But you're even worse than I am! <gasps> A really funny and poignant episode. I personally think this is easily among the best. Number 8. 
Time Traveler's Pig. Dipper and Mabel steal a time traveler's device. So Dipper uses it to continually redo a moment in time to try and stop Robbie from asking Wendy to date him. I really like time traveling episodes of shows. It's such a fun concept to see creative, smart people like this play around with. I like how no matter how many times Dipper tries to get this one throw right, he always somehow botches it up. Bad luck. And the one time he does get it right, Mabel loses her pig. So Dipper has to make the decision whether to let Mabel lose her pig or be certain he'll lose Wendy. Well, I just wanted to say that people make mistakes. And when they do, you should forgive them. And also that tight pants are overrated. Dude, you lost me. I know. And a one, and a two, and a huh. It's a simple story with a surprisingly powerful message. They even get randomly thrown 150 years back and forth for good measure. This one is clever, detailed, and adds a lot of new mystery to the show. I think this one's an easy choice for the list. One thing bothers me though. Why didn't he just ask her to duck? It is done. And for number seven, Tourist Trapped. I know it's cheating a bit to use the first episode, but this one made me laugh hard enough to concern the neighbors. Mabel gets a new boyfriend, who Dipper justifiably thinks is a zombie. And how he discovers these clues is part of what makes it funny. We are then given one of the funniest plot twists in the series to date. Mabel's boyfriend is in fact a gnome. Is this weird? Is this too weird? There's so much action and laughs in this episode that it really is an emotional high all the way through. I haven't laughed so much at 20 minutes of animation in a long time. This was one of the best starts they could have given the series. It's an absolute classic. Grappling hook! Fair enough. Number six. Northwest Mansion Mystery. Dipper agrees to help Pacifica's family by busting the ancient left-wing communist ghost. I like how we get a new character complexity to Pacifica in this one. There's just something really satisfying about watching two enemies put their differences aside to work together for a common cause. And I like seeing that sense of decency shown even Mabel's worst enemy. She sees that she doesn't have to be an elitist like her parents. She can be something more. Our family name is broken and I'm gonna fix it. I really like Grenda's performance in this one. One of the amazing parts about this show is that even the minor characters are unforgettable and Mabel's friends are no exception. There's just something I like about characters who act like themselves wholeheartedly, regardless of social acceptance. I don't have a phone! Write it on my face! There's a real sense of supernatural to this episode that really gives an amazing atmosphere. A legitimately creepy atmosphere, actually. There's a surprisingly complicated message to this one that I'm surprised to see in a kid's show. It's a message about showing equality, regardless of wealth or social status. Unique, thoughtful, and atmospheric. I really like this one. Pacifica, you are not like the other Northwests. I feel lumber justice. And for number five, Seuss and the Real Girl. Seuss needs a girlfriend, so we watch our socially awkward friend terrify women by trying to flirt with them. Your face is good. I'm a Seuss. While Stan gets the brilliant idea to steal Chuck E. Cheese animatronic robots to try and impress the young hip crowd. Seuss eventually tries a Japanese dating sim. When the cherry petals of Magic Romance Academy are in bloom, anything can have bloom. That is so true. That comes to life and gets jealous over Seuss's new girlfriend and tries to give Chuck E. Cheese that real Friday Night at Freddy's feeling. It's again a really affectionate parody of some of the insane Japanese dating sims out there. I like the simple message to this one. 
There's no, some people can't get dates garbage. Eventually, Seuss gets a date by just meeting a kind, like-minded person and starting up a conversation. Um, you mean, Hoo-Ha Owls, Owls Pizza Matronic Jamboree! What? You've heard of Hoo-Ha Owls? I loved that place when I was a kid! Oh yeah, dude, there's one right in this mall! I should show you sometime. I'm free around eight. Boom! Done! Perfect! This episode managed to be funny, charming, and kind of creepy, but with a satisfying conclusion. This episode's an easy choice for the list. But we can video chat, if that's okay with you. A relationship with a girl that I can only see through my computer. Sounds perfect! Number four. Legend of the Gobblewonka. Seuss, Dipper, and Mabel start their adventures off by trying to track down the Loch Ness Monster. I always end up laughing myself silly at this episode. This one really shows off what a great team the three of them make. As much as I like the other characters in Gravity Falls, there's something nice about just watching these three friends enjoy a trip together. Mabel, it rhymes with table. It also rhymes with glabel. It also rhymes with schmabel. Dude, we should be writing this down. The jokes in this one particularly are really polished. It really shows that they wanted to follow the pilot up with some brilliant ideas. Action-packed and simple, but hilarious and tons of fun. I definitely recommend this one. Dude, if it makes you feel any better, I got tons of pictures of those beavers, dude! Why would that make me feel better? <laughs> and for number three... Little Gift Shop of Horrors. We've approached the Mystery Shack after hours. So Stan tells us some scary tales. Tales designed to sell my merchandise! <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of something funny I heard earlier. He first treats us to a tale where Stan loses his hands to a witch who wants to lure him on a date. So hard to meet people these days. So this was all just a ploy to get a date? I'm desperate, okay? We then get a story where Mabel's pig becomes a genius, only to realize his great intelligence has made him lose sight of what truly matters to him. It makes you think. No, it doesn't. And then we get Clay Day. Whatever happened to Claymation? The last claymation I remember was Neverhood, and that was awesome! I don't know why no one does it anymore. Essentially, this story is all about poking fun at special effects and animators, as well as being amazing to watch. This one gives us some of Gravity Falls' sharpest fourth wall jokes. A really funny set of tales with a really funny conclusion. This one is definitely worth a watch. Stop motion is pure evil! I'm probably really expensive. Incredibly expensive. This is an impressive fight, though. I'm glad I'm facing towards it. Yeah. Man, that was the best part. And for number two, Bottomless Pit. I just have a lot of affection for this episode. It's definitely the episode I've watched the most out of all of them. Stan, Mabel, Dipper, and Seuss fall down the bottomless pit. The minor problem being, it's bottomless. So they spend their time telling each other stories. This episode was probably considerably cheaper to animate than the rest. Ta-da! There's really something I like about the absurdity of watching our favorite characters chill about telling stories as they fall through a bottomless pit. This episode is a bit like the Treehouse of Horror Simpsons formula, or the Anthology of Interest Futurama formula, basically telling a bunch of crazy short stories that allow the writers to do whatever they want. We get one of Dipper's voice changing to that of a weather reporter? He'll like my new voice. You'll see. I'll be right back after these messages. I, uh, I mean, goodbye. There's another one where Seuss, Mabel, and Dipper get trapped in a pinball machine, and one of Stan getting teeth that force him to tell the truth all the time. Which, no surprise, turns out to be comic gold. What do you do in secret every day during your lunch break? Usually I spend the hour aggressively scratching myself in places I shouldn't mention. Now I'm going to avoid making eye contact by pretending to read this newspaper. And go to the bathroom without washing my hands. Ew. We have a story that starts with a bear driving Stan, Mabel, and Dipper across town and getting let off by the cops despite a bear driving the car. Can't argue with Dr. Medicine. To the hospital, honey pants! I'd tell you more, but this is one you have to see in full to appreciate. It's easily among my favorite episodes. 
before we get to number one, there is a couple of quick honorable mentions. Scary Oki. This one I definitely call number 11. It actually manages to match the amazing introduction we got to season one. Zombies, secrets, FBI agents, and karaoke. This one's definitely worth a watch. The Staunchian Candidate. Stan runs for mayor. Stan, the loud mouth, insane scammer that lets a bear drive him around town. Stan himself is such an entertaining character to watch regardless of the setting. He's so boisterous and in your face that watching this guy run for mayor is just the perfect setting for him. Dungeons, dungeons, and more dungeons. While the first half moves a little slow, the second half of this episode is incredible. They even managed to get Weird Al to voice the main D&D villain. And damn, it makes you wish he was voicing more cartoons. And more dungeons! Real life edition! <laughs> Weird Al makes this episode. And the number one best Gravity Falls episode is... Not What He Seems. It would be a crime to not talk about this episode. Mabel and Dipper have to discover Stan's true identity before the universe is destroyed. Probably the most action-packed, mystery-filled episode the show has given us to date. There's a real sense of urgency and mystery to this one, and it shows that when the creators want to be serious, they can do serious really well. The music is powerful, atmospheric, and even the lighting is a bit darker. There's an almost apocalyptic feel to this one as the countdown approaches. There's a really powerful ending that leads to the greatest mystery reveal we've ever seen in Gravity Falls. So much is on the line in this one. It's just an absolute blast of an episode with a ton of good jokes as well. There has never been an episode like this one to date. It was powerful, funny, shocking, and an absolute must see. I won't reveal any more as the plot reveals are just too damn big. One. It's been mentioned by people a lot lately, but it really feels like we're in a golden age of cartoons now. There's still your occasional stinker show, but we've come a long way from the days of cheap buy our toys cartoons from the 90s to where we are today. And Gravity Falls is a perfect example. I particularly can't wait to see what they do with Bill Cipher. They've left us on a real cliffhanger right now. Here's hoping Mabel and Dipper's summer lasts a little longer yet, and the town of Gravity Falls has a lot more mystery to be found. Do you have a favorite episode yourself? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Wrestling hook! Told you it would come in handy.